Hey everyone, Duke here, and today we got a big Season 20 weapon tuning preview from Bungie, and we're going to go over a few of the big points and some weapons to go for and things to look out for on the road to Lightfall due to this change. So as you're probably aware, linear fusion rifles have been super meta for a very long time now, and they're going to be nerfed in a couple of ways. Our first nerf across all non-exotic linear fusion rifles is going to be a 15% damage reduction to champions, mini bosses, bosses, and vehicles. As I just mentioned, and as you can see here, exotics are not going to be affected by this nerf. So Sleeper and Queenbreaker are unaffected. I'm actually really excited to see how Sleeper is in this kind of changed meta and definitely going to be, it was already really high damage per shot. And with that 15% damage reduction on legendary versions of linear fusion rifles, definitely interested to see how Sleeper performs now. The second big change to linears, or at least some linears, is the Vice Stinger perk being nerfed down from a full reload to 25% of the magazine when it procs. This is going to affect Typen and Reed's Regret. This is a huge nerf. Honestly, this makes Vice Stinger significantly, significantly less strong. It is still useful, as they say. Like, it, it does help. It's kind of, I guess, like a extra triple tap, but only procs sometimes in terms of you're going to get one, maybe two extra bullets depending on if it rounds upwards or not, which I assume it will. So two shots is still not terrible, but is, this is a big nerf. This is definitely, I'd consider this a bigger nerf than the 15% damage, especially, well, only to type in and reads, but those are two of the more exciting and more used options. There is still one more option to look out for other than the exotics like Sleeper. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And the final thing we're going to talk about in terms of changes before we talk about some weapons to look out for is heavy grenade launchers. They have been in a very, very weak position for a while, in my opinion, and they're getting some big buffs and big changes here. We're going to be getting a 20% damage buff across the board on all heavy linear fusion rifles, other than Parasite, because Parasite already hits pretty hard, but 20% damage buff to champions, mini bosses, bosses, and vehicles, and a 40% damage buff to minor enemies. So... At least for DPS, minor enemies aren't going to really matter too much, but for bosses, champions, stuff like that, 20% damage, that's pretty nice. We're going to get improved projectile collision, making it easier to land hits. Sometimes with the way grenade launchers kind of have their arc to them and such, it can be a little bit difficult to hit the shot, which obviously does not do very good damage when you don't hit something. So that's always nice. Uh, increased blast radius by one meter, a little bit more ability to hit your target again in case you miss by a little bit blast radius or you know if it's a little off target give that ability to still do the damage and as i just mentioned parasite is unaffected because it's already doing pretty solid damage and is used in some cases outside of uh, unlike many other heavy grenade launchers not really being used very often if ever so there's three exotics I want to briefly touch on just due to some of these changes or lack of changes in some cases. The first one is Izanagi's Burden. This has been a very solid kind of swap weapon in a lot of situations. Usually is either Izanagi's with rockets or Izanagi's with grenade launchers. And with rockets being unchanged and already being quite good and grenade launchers being buffed, I feel like Izanagi's Burden is definitely going to be an exotic that can get some limelight in the new season with Lightfall. Second exotic I want to talk about is Sleeper Simulant. This is a linear fusion rifle, but is unaffected by the changes, as we mentioned just a few minutes ago. And Sleeper is not a bad option. Again, it doesn't really hold up to the current other legendary options. And it's like, why would you run an exotic? Why would you use an exotic that's less good than a legendary version of it? But with those 15% damage nerfs and the Vice Stinger nerfs and things like that, I do think Sleeper definitely may have a place in some situations and some content going forward, so keep Sleeper in mind as well. And we might be back. Is it back? I think it might be back. Anarchy. Anarchy is going to be affected by the 20% damage buff for grenade launchers. Anarchy is a long-standing king of just the entire game until semi-recent nerfs. And bringing it back, it's still, you know, been usable over the last few seasons. It's not what it once was, but a 20% damage buff across the board is going to be extremely, extremely helpful. It's going to uh, definitely excited to see where Anarchy lands in the uh, in the changes and when Lifewall comes out here. So with these changes, there's quite a few rocket launchers I want to talk about and a couple roles that I would potentially be on the lookout for going for on each of these rockets. 
And the first one we're going to talk about, just because it is the most current, is Roar of the Bear, Iron Banner. This is going to only be available for the rest of this week, so you're going to need to get on this quickly if this is the rocket that you're going to be going for, or if it's you want to have one of these. The role I would look out for on Roar of the Bear is Demolitionist and Vorpal. It's going to be very, very nice, and Vorpal gives you a 10% damage buff on champions, bosses, all those types of things. And Demo, if you're having a grenade focus build, especially something like Starfire Protocol, on Warlock, you're going to have enough grenades to kind of just get that instant reload from throwing your grenade. Definitely a nice option. And if you're doing Iron Banner, you're going to be obviously in Crucible, and the Blowout Rocket Launcher is this season's Crucible drop. You're going to get a lot of these pretty much every single match that you do of Crucible. And this also rolls Demolitionist and Vorpal, so I would be on the lookout for this roll on both Roar of the Bear and Blowout if you're doing Iron Banner, or if you don't do Iron Banner, just do Crucible then again, you can still get the demo Vorpal roll on this rocket as well. The next rocket I'm going to talk about is Hezen Vengeance. This is from Vault of Glass and is actually also this week in terms of the featured raid, so another kind of good timing on a rocket to go for. This has quite a few solid rolls. I have a few of them that I've saved. I have Overflow Demolitionist, Overflow Lasting Impression, and Auto Loading Lasting Impression. All can be pretty solid. It also rolls Auto Loading and Vorpal or Overflow Vorpal. That's going to be a solid as well. Technically, Lasting Impression does do more damage than Vorpal. Keep in mind that it can potentially kill you if you're not careful. It does take a little bit longer to actually do its damage. You know, you take the shot, takes a couple seconds to then explode, versus Vorpal just does its damage straight up. So that's probably a little bit more flexible and definitely a little higher ease of use. But I would look out for one of these if you are doing any of the Vault of Glass stuff this week or just have one in your vault potentially from previous seasons. Another solid rocket to look out for. Next we have two craftable rockets, and the first one, and the one I'd recommend if you have access to it and have the season, is Bump in the Night. This is going to roll either Auto Loading or Demolitionist. Again, these are kind of the two perks I most like to have on a rocket, so if a rocket has it, usually the perk I'm going to recommend. And it also rolls Vorpal Weapon as well, so you can go Auto Loading Vorpal, you can go Demo Vorpal. You can also think about Frenzy as a perk on this one. This is going to allow in like a longer damage phase, or if you're able to be consistently in combat, that's going to give you 15% damage buff instead of 10 like Vorpal does. So Frenzy is a consideration if you're able to proc it in whatever you're using it in. It's just going to be a little bit less flexible, and Vorpal's really, really nice because anytime you're fighting a boss or a champion or anything like that, you're just getting more damage, you don't have to think about anything, you don't have to do anything, so that's super duper nice. It does also roll Chill Clip, which I know there's been a little bit of positivity and a little bit of negativity. There's been some questioning on Chill Clip, right? I think the overall idea of Chill Clip, which was uh, kind of figured out, is the more people running it, the less useful it is. So if you know if everyone starts running auto chill clip or demo chill clip, it's not going to be very useful. Like one person on chill clip can be useful. Again, that removes a lot of flexibility, similar to Frenzy, like where it's not gonna always work. If you're just looking for one rocket, always working, auto loading Vorpal I think is your answer. Again, even Demolitionist has a little bit of a lack of flexibility just in if you're not getting grenades consistently on whatever build you're running. You know, you can maybe throw, throw one grenade and get one instant reload, which is nice, but I think Auto Vorpal is going to be your most consistent roll on most of these rockets. Now the other rocket I'd look out for that's craftable is the Palmyra B. This is does not require a season, it was just a, I believe, world drop in Witch Queen, and I think just drops as a world drop now. I think might even have been a quest that you can just get along the way. I, I feel like this was a very easy to acquire craftable rocket, but either way, it, again, rolls auto-loading. I definitely would recommend auto-loading on this one. Ambitious Assassin, not really something we're looking for, at least not for, like, a DPS option. You're not going to, you know, instant kill a boss and then reload it and get those extra shots. If you're going to use it more of a Ed clear rocket, I could see it, but otherwise, auto-loading, definitely. And in the final column, again, we have Lasting Impression. Kind of talked about that a little bit earlier. Again, we have Chill Clip. Just talked about that. Uh, this one also rolls Explosive Light, which this is going to be a 25% damage buff on picking up orbs. When you pick up orbs, you're going to get stacks. Every time you shoot out a rocket, you lose a stack, but you get that damage buff. And with some of the changes we heard about with maybe with some more orb generation coming, and, you know, just even in general, like, you know, if you're dropping a well right before a damage phase, dropping a bubble right before a damage phase, popping a tether on the boss right before a damage phase, like, it's not very hard to come by at least a couple orbs 
in most DPS phases, especially in a raid setting. So Explosive Light, very, very good perk on a rocket and in something we'll talk about a little bit later. So keep an eye out for this. And again, it also does roll Frenzy. So there's some good options here. It also rolls Frenzy, just like we talked about before. Bigger damage buff than Vorpal, which doesn't even roll on here, but so you're not even considering Vorpal. But 15% damage buff from Frenzy could be interesting in, uh, in this setting as well. Again, especially in a longer damage phase and in a phase where you're constantly kind of taking damage or doing damage so that you actually have that Frenzy buff. But long story short, for this rocket, I honestly would recommend auto-loading and explosive light. I think that's going to be the best option for this rocket. And this is honestly maybe one of the most, again, one of the most easy to acquire, if not the easiest to acquire out of all these rockets, and also very flexible. Maybe one of, if not the most flexible rockets by going with auto-loading and explosive light. So highly recommend this one. And the last rocket we're going to talk about is the Hothead. Sadly, this is not currently acquirable, but next season through Vanguard focusing should again be acquirable. So if you're watching this video, maybe slightly after Lightfall, another rocket to go for. And again, similar to what we've talked about before, we got auto loading, we got Demolitionist in the third column. Those are both going to be kind of the two options I would recommend going for. And again, can roll Explosive Light. So I really like auto loading Explosive Light. This is honestly the rocket I'm using most often right now if I'm doing DPS. Uh, in a DPS setting with a rocket, and it also rolls Vorpal in this fourth column, so you can look for auto-loading Vorpal, demo Vorpal, all those types of options are, again, options on this rocket, and as an adept weapon, kind of nice, you can run big one spec so that you can get extra damage to both majors and bosses all in one, so big one spec is always a nice, nice little extra boost on top of all the other rockets that cannot roll adept. The only other rocket we talked about that can roll ad with uh, Adept and get the Adept Big One spec on it is Hesin's Vengeance. Again, that's from Vogg, so you've got kind of two options if you really want to get that extra boost from the Adept mods. Now, as we mentioned, Linear Fusion Rifles got pretty heavily nerfed. Again, 15% damage is pretty decent, and Vice Stinger really, really hurts Typen and Reed, so I'm not really even looking at those much anymore. But the one Linear that I think is still going to be quite strong, other than Sleeper, is Cataclysmic. This was already technically the strongest option, but now it's significantly the strongest option with the Vice Stinger nerf, and I think the role you're definitely going to want to go for, I don't really think there's any other options, is 4th Times and Bait and Switch. Technically, you can also go for 4th Times and Focus Fury. Focus Fury is a 20% damage buff. Bait and Switch is 35%, so it's a 15% extra damage buff on Bait and Switch. It can be a little bit tricky to to come by sometimes if you're not quick on your weapon swaps i would recommend if possible and i know it can be hard getting five patterns especially from a raid weapon i would recommend crafting this one and getting the enhanced bait and switch it really does feel i'm not a huge person on like feeling like enhanced traits are like a huge difference this one feels pretty impactful in terms of how much time you have to proc bait and switch so Again, I think it's doable either way, even if you just, if you just get a 4 times bait and switch or don't have the materials to get the enhanced traits or something like that, it's still going to be solid, it's still worth going for, it's just a little bit of an extra boost that I think is even more worth than uh, in some other settings and scenarios. So there's two grenade launchers I want to talk about that aren't Anarchy. The first one is the Typhon GL5. This is going to be focusable at the helm in the star chart as an Amalon weapon, as you can see here. And the role I'm going to go for on this is Spike Grenades, definitely for the additional impact damage, as well as Demolitionist and Explosive Light. As you can see, Explosive Light is a 44% increased damage buff on grenade launchers, so I think that's definitely the option. This does not roll auto-loading holster at all, so Demolitionist is going to be your option here in terms of getting that reload off, and can be actually super nice. You can get the, you know, six or so shots off, throw a grenade, immediately get all six shots back in your bag, shoot them again. Even in a setting, and I kind of consider this when, when talking about this weapon, but you can get those six stacks of explosive light and get all six shots, you know, with the damage buff. But is if you pre kind of farm those stacks and before a damage phase, you shoot off your six shots. And then if there's orbs sitting around, again, if you already had them, there's orbs sitting around from a well, orbs sitting around from a bubble, orbs sitting around from a tether. So even when you throw your grenade, get the demolitionist proc, you could potentially pick up those orbs and get another six stacks reasonably possibly reasonably easily maybe even in some cases and get all 12 plus shots with that explosive light buff so definitely keep this in mind again it probably would be something to swap in and out of anyway with izanagi's or something of that nature maybe arbalist or 
basically something that can hit hard in a different slot, but definitely an option here. To go along with our second option, which is the Windigo Grenade Launcher, which will only be available for one week this season, the very final week before Lightfall. It's going to be the Word of Nothing Nightfall, uh, the week of February 21st, I believe. And again, you can get this regular version, get the Adept version if you're doing GMs, but similar roles here that we're going to look out for. Again, we're going to look out for Spike Grenades. We're going to look out for Auto Loading Holster. This one does roll Auto Loading Holster. It does also roll Clown Cartridge, which I think can be very solid option as well. It's going to give you up to a 50% weapon magazine reload. So you can get up to, I believe, nine shots on a reload before having to reload it. So kind of a middle ground almost between auto loading and demolitionist. And if you're just wanting to go like bam, 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 without having to worry about reloading, get all the shots off really quick. Definitely a solid option here. And then again, we have explosive light, which is going to be a huge damage buff. We do also have full court, which is interesting, especially if you're going to do damage from a large distance. And with something like Clown Cartridge, again, with nine shots, you may not get all nine stacks of Explosive Light unless you do something like we mentioned just before, where you have the six stacks kind of pre-farmed before a DPS phase, pick up orbs during the DPS phase type of thing, which is doable, but maybe you don't want to worry about that. So full court, a little bit more consistent potentially. Frenzy, again, we talked about on Rockets, definitely going to be a lower damage buff on Frenzy, but as long as you're in combat and get that buff, 15% damage and it works on anything. Don't need any orbs, don't need to be, like, be at any certain distance, like full court. So Frenzy is another option as well. And again, I think I'm going to go for auto loading explosive light. Again, definitely want spike grenades for that extra damage, but this is going to be a really, really top tier option for grenade launchers. And again, only available one week. Make sure you farm the final week before Lightfall to get this grenade launcher. And that's all for today. I hope this video helped you kind of consider some options with the upcoming linear fusion rifle nerfs and what may be useful to have for next season if you already have it or some things to go for over the next four weeks if you don't. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.